Check. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Hard away, my Savior leads me. What have I to dread? Can I doubt his tender mercies? Who to life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. For I know what here befall me. Jesus, do it all things well. Eternal God and Father, our refuge and strength, the very present help in the time of trouble. We come in the name of Yahshua Amashiach. We do glorify, we magnify, we exalt you, we worship you, Lord. Lord, we come at this thanksgiving service of my dear heart, Lord. Oh, Lord, you give it life and you take it life, Lord. Oh, God Almighty, man that is born of a human, oh, God, is a few days and full of shower. And as we get to the, oh, Lord, God, I pray for comfort every I pray you lead and guide this service to every one of us and the family member, Lord. Cause thou in spirit and in soul, you whisper sweet peace, Lord. Tell the moderator, Lord. Take every one child, give you a tribute in word. Lord, every one will wish us, Lord. Oh, guide us and protect us and be with us, Lord. Oh, God, give us this fear. And we swing the serves and everyone in hands. And those of you will come in with their thanks. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Peck. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I take great honor to greet all God ministers, lovely choir musicians, Bereaved family, including myself, saints of God, well wishers from everywhere who walk on here today to help to hold up the hands of our brothers and sisters. Please accept greetings in the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I know the occasion is not one of the best. But as we remember, God gives life and he takes it away. And I'm sure that Sister Joyce never been murdered by the enemy. The only enemy that we would have said is death. And that is appointed unto man. So we must take that with a smile. Because we are not here to be wood and stone. Let me say this to you that Brother Joe said that the tree that you are looking on the outside there is more hope for the tree if it cut down prevent you with spring from the earth but man goes to his long home and he will not return so in everything the word of god said we must give thanks amen, amen. now i'm going to beg you to work with me and we see if we can get this thing off the ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Scripture reading. Mr. Rico McQueen and Miss Shalisha Hardy, grandchildren. It is Psalms 90 from 1 to 12. You can use that small podium there, uh, whatever you call it, it's a different name. Good morning, everyone. Um, praise be unto the Lord. We shall be reading from Psalms 90, verses 1 to 12. You get your Bibles, and there we go. Verse 1 A prayer of Moses. The man of God, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Verses 3. 
Thou turnest man to destruction, and saith, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years is thy sight, and for a thousand years is thy sight, are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Verse 5. Thou carriest them away as with the with a flood. They are as the, as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy continence. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet it is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thy anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So, so teach, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Thank you for following along. I got a selection, Mr. Roy Taylor, and then we're going to go into our tribute. The tribute is going to come as soon as we finish on our sing. Mr. Kerry, okay, Conan, son in law. Miss Conan, Elaine Rotary, okay, Davis, stepdaughter. The Francis brothers and sisters, the Victoria Full Troop, a God, Selection, Tarika Ratri, Wellington, daughter. I'm going to ask you to come in that order. So the only way you're going to hear me on this, I don't see the person come, all right, until my time again. So come as follows. God bless you. We praise the Lord. Praise, Lord. praise Him one more time. Praise Although we are not in real service, we still can praise Him. Because God says in whatever thing, we have to praise Him. Praise the Lord. Let me greet the platform party, moderator, ministers, bereaved family, and all well wishers and friends of Sister Joyce. It's a pleasure of mine to stand here to speak a word on her behalf. Sister Joyce and I used to work very closely. When I came to take charge of the Victoria Primary School, she was principal at the Victoria Basic School. It was called Early Childhood Education Institutions in those days. It was called Basic School. And we used to work very closely together. At, when it comes to September, I would have to consult with Sister Joyce to get a list of students coming up to my school from her school. And so we had a good working relationship. She was a very affable, sociable, friendly person. She was one with whom you could have a good discourse. And so, she and I, we lived very, very good. There were times when Sister Joyce would carry a little bag for me. And when I opened it, I see some Irish potato, I see a piece of yam, 
or something. She's always giving me a gift. And uh, myself and the family, Hopi, and her brother, we live very good. And we had a good relationship. She was an icon in her own way. She has left an indelible mark on the, on the footprints of time. She has taught so many children. She has molded so many lives. And so this morning, many of us are grateful to her for the task that she has done. She has done a very great task. Because to mold them little minds are not easy, you know. To start them at three and four, no easy. If, if they get so much up when they reach 12 and 13 and go, what's the way they are four and whatever? You have to baby them, you have to do everything for them, you have to take care of them. And so she has done a human job in that area. I know that she has touched the lives of many between Bloomwell, Victoria, and other areas because children came from all around to come to her school. And so today I must say, God bless her for the work that she has done because many today are reaping the benefits or the work, the fruit of her labor. May her soul rest in peace and life perpetual continually shine on earth. God bless you.
the name of the Lord. You know, start to tell you. Thank the Lord. It's going on. And it's going a fine style. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to just chant a little bit as we will be going to the, the second scripture reading that will be done by it is it Nakela Ratri and that's a granddaughter and that's Miss I should be an old Beyond the blue sky. Hallelujah. You carry me home. I Who can bring a clean out of an unclean? 
not one. Seeing if days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bones that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as an hurling state. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, then it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Verse 8, though the root thereof walks old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet though the, yet through the sense of the water it will bud, and bring forth buds like a plant. Man dies and wastes away, yea, man give up the ghost, and we are As the waters fail from the sea, and the blood decay and dry it up, so man lies and raise not. Right. Sorry. So the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Hold, oh, that wouldest hide me in the grave, that wouldest keep me a secret, until thy right wrath be passed, and thou wouldest appoint me a sick side, and remember me. Verse 14 and last, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Here ended a portion of God's own word, the honor by his name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's another reminder here. Right. Now I'm going to go into the second batch of uh, tributes, and I am asking you to cooperate with me as you are doing. Amen? Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Leader G. Ratri and daughter, Brumel, well, husband and daughter, yes. Oh, daughters, just a minute. And then, Brumel Pentecostal Church, Sunbury United, Smithville Baptist Church, Victor Basic School, the Francis Nieces and Nephews, Victoria Church of God, Pastor Brown and members, and uh, ICTR Doctor. Marlene Bartley, could you come in that order, please?
the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory. This is my favorite song. Any time they get to uh, sing a song of an elephant or a dog, this is my song. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Sister Jai, Sister Jai, she teach three of my children. And all of them at that time, they were on the same size. Same size. And she always said to me, Sajini, so come. Bless the name of the Lord. So since I have company, they might have different songs. Bless the name of the Lord. I see there and I see there our leader. You just are crying. You just are crying. But I want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. As we sing this song. I am somebody with you. You share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me.
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Now twilight is dim. Students 
many people sitting here in this room today, they are past students. You're saying yes, good. All right, so I started working at that school in the year 2000 when it was at the basic school stage. But the year 2003, many of you did not know, the Early Child Commission took over from the basic school. So it was no longer a basic school, but an early childhood institution. The change was terrible as the government asked us to make many trips to Kingston and those teachers who are here today, they can say yes. So you have to take all the documents to Kingston on a daily basis and all poor me never know Kingston, but I learned to know Kingston from then. So Miss, Mrs. Ratchet told the board that she cannot manage the journey to Kingston, you know, to and from. It was hard for me, who is a younger person, moreover. So, in 2003, when they took over, the journey continued from here to Kingston to get this and get that, a new document to change over. It's like changing over your land in somebody else's name. So she continued with us, and she asked the board to allow a stronger person to take over the reign as principal. So, the lot fall on me. So, um, I continue on the journey, but she was there with us. And those who used to work at the school, and they're still here. Although um, the transformation came, I treated her with the same respect. She was an older person. I've never frowned on her or disrespect her in any way. And I must put some cement on this one now. She told the board, that she no longer wants to work. She told the board that she has been working for over 40 years and she wants to go home and make soup and porridge for her husband. <laughs> All right, sir. So she did not leave because the ministry or the board was tired of her or I was tired of her, any teacher she asked to leave. But she was tired. But Miss Ratchie was a good teacher. On a Monday morning, you'd see her with her bag. That you eat enough yam from the field. She would carry her yam or coke or dashi and said, This be careful to make a soup. And she was very loving and kind to the children. So although she's gone, her mark was still there at the school. Even a pot that was purchased in the year 1965. It's still at the school now. And each time I look at the pot, I remember her. So Miss Ratchet is gone. But there are many children here today who she has touched their life. May her soul rest in peace.
To my loving sister, we all miss you, but I know for sure we will meet again. I saw you 15 days before you left us, and I did not know it would be my last time seeing you. I remember you sang this song, I shall soon be leaving this old world of sorrow, leaving out for home, faith in God, and keeping lest it be tomorrow when I cease to roam. You also sang the refrain, leaving out soon, leaving out this earthly frame, must fall, leaving out soon, leaving out when Jesus my Lord shall come at call. Yes. I know you will have a share in the glory of Christ's resurrection, my dearest sister. So sleep and take your rest. We all love you, but Jesus loves you best. Good night, Auntie Joyce, from your brother, Dad Francis. Yeah. John saw a city that could not be built. John saw a city, oh yes he did. John saw the flames of the golden throne. Tell me all about it, oh right on. Around the throne he saw the prisoner see. There's got to be more, what will it be?
another time. Another time. We are here to pay our last respect to Sister Joyce, to my friend Lena Rotary. Yes, sir. Be a good chair. Yes, she gone home to be with the Lord. The Lord saw that the journey was getting rough. Yes. And the hills were hard to climb. Yes. And the Lord said, come home, my child. You would have done your part along with your children. You did your part and you did it well. And we want to give God thanks. With our church, we are going to minister. But just to let you aware that the school that she taught for over 40 years is owned by the Church of God in Jamaica. It's our church school. And the Deaconess Henry, before we do the song, will tell you a little more. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As Reverend Brown said at this school, belong to us. That's the Church of God in Jamaica. Um, Sister Joyce, Joyce as our oh, principal here, Mrs. Givens, um, told you about the number of years, years that she worked there. And we had a, being our church school, we had a good uh, working relationship. It is said that we should not scatter roses after the person is gone, but we should give it to them while they are alive. And in light of that, we had an appreciation service for Miss Joyce and others. She did not attend the appreciation service, but we took it to her at her home. Yes. Yes, we took the appreciation service to her at her home. And, um, yes, yes, yes. We took it to her. And um, if you look at the picture, at the, um, the program here, you can see you can tell uh, at the top here, top, left hand, not, not, the, not the immediate top. Um, because when we went to her, few of us in a picture down there, you can see Leader Ratchery in the center of the program. Leader Ratchery is there. I am standing beside it. That's a really pretty. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was looking at it a while ago and I said, no, that's a really pretty. <laughs> so Leader Ratchery, I'm standing beside Leader Ratchery. Sister Joyce is there. And I don't can't remember who this person is. Sister McLean. McLean. Okay. McLean. And then we have Deacon Taylor and Sister um, Karma and Mrs. Taylor. When we went there, Sister Karma, she was going to Frankfield and she, she stuck with us. And we had the appreciation service right there. We took, in the home, we took the, the plaque and the, the um, citation and we pinned the rose on her. So the church had the appreciation service right in her home. And so. We are going to sing. The church now is going to sing. Yes. Trouble sometimes are
an awesome privilege to have met Sister Joyce Bradbury many years ago. I met her through my mother, who was also a basic school teacher. And both of them became tight friends. When I said they were bosom friends, very close. And I deliberately call her Sister Joyce Rattery today. My siblings and I used to say Miss Rattery. Last Wednesday I was trying to get some corruption out of my case. And I saw an envelope in my mother's handwriting, Sister Joyce Rattery, Victoria Basic School. And I said, then if you went to this school, there should be a formal Mrs. Rattery, and Sister Rattery. And my mother never called her anything other than Sister Rachel. They were in the same zone, I think, um, you can be zone 42 or zone 41. And then there was a change. And my mother lamented, lamented, and now go to Sister Rachel. She lamented for a long time, but the friendship continued. I call her reliable, dependable. That woman. Whichever, whoever of them got first to wherever the supplies for the school was coming. They had to collect their food subsidies and other resources for the school from the government. And if Sister Rachel got there first, she collected for my mother and she was collecting for Goshen School too. And if my mother got there, it was the same thing. They were collecting and they were working on the transportation and so on. The first gentleman who spoke, the past principal of the school, spoke about the kindness of Mrs. Rattery. Once we were at the house and I hear somebody calling my mother, Miss, Miss Daughter, somebody leave some out of shop for you. We knew what that meant and we went out there. It was Sister Rattery. Although we were the first house on the street, she never had a chance to come because she was always busy, but she was leaving the box out there. The poor for the dashi in Yamaton, we got so much. And when my mother died some years ago and I didn't see her, I you know that she was ill. Yes. Yes. And when she sent the food here, Mr. Rattray said, me down market. Because after we finished that year, I gave away, I gave away cabbage, I gave away bananas. And when we finished, I think we had um, another bunch of bananas still left there yes. after I'd given and given away. That was how generous she was. Yes. I call her a phenomenal woman, strong woman. Person who you would not see it in the newspaper, her name she might not go on the at the national awards yes. ceremony, but she held her family together. She kept her school. She was really a woman of God nice. and a very caring person. Whenever she called, I was amazed at how Sister Rachel remembered all my brothers and sisters' names. She called, she asked, "This what?" So don't you see? So everybody named so yes. she asked him for this one, that one. That was the kind of person she was a very caring person. And I respect her for that. And it doesn't make sense that we come here today and we just talk because it sounds good. Yes. What we need to do is to practice yes. what she did because she lived the life that Christ preached. Amen. That's the gospel. Yes. When you saw Mr. Um, Sister Rachel doing good, that was the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's what we ought to do today. And you know what? A lot of times she did it from behind. She was a very shy person. I don't know if anybody else knows that. She was shy person. I'm going to make a confession. 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 She was behind. I was doing a lot of stuff. I don't know if you know what she's like. Sometimes you know what she's like. Come out, no young eye. And she was just that kind of person. And whenever I called and I prayed with her and so on, she was really a bubbling um, character. And I know that. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sin. Thank you. Put your hands together again. We are traveling really fine. Yes. All right. As a moderator, I'm going to ask you to say a few words is going to come and read. So let me make sure you say that I'm dead. Um, before I call Sister, uh, Mr. Sister in Brown uh, for the, um, and pass on the effect for the remembrance, let Sister Gibbons say what she was say first. Thank you very much, Uncle Moderator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this tribute, this is the last thing I would want to forget. Tribute for the late, late Joyce Ratchet, the woman I affectionately called Mama. 
She was there when I took my first breath and stayed, I stayed with her until she took her last. I lived with her for my 39 years on earth and she never allowed me to go to my bed hungry. She was always taking care and looking out for me as her wash belly. If I am going on the road, she will call me back and say, Pete, you have money? <laughs> Not that I cannot wash, but until two weeks before she passed, she was putting my clothes into the machine and she washed them. She was a woman with a heart of gratitude. I never give her a plate of food and she don't say, thank you, Pete. Just thinking about her, all I can say is my mother, my mother, my mother. There's no one like her. She was genuine and have a loving heart to everyone. I am grateful for the time I spent with her and the advice she gave. I know that my mother found rest with God. She was a committed wife and mother like no other. Proverbs 31 is a perfect description of who my mother was. The wise man Solomon was describing my mother when he wrote that book. Who can find a virtuous woman for a price is above rubies? She will forever be in my heart. Sleep well, mama, until we meet. Love you from Pete. Yeah. sometimes catching problem if you don't use wisdom and uh, when you don't when you set example and you break it what do you expect the others should do but I said to them one of the time I'm gonna skip and do a part time so that I can able to talk a little bit about the individual because sister Joyce the late sister Joyce I know the remembrance is going to come, but I'm a moderate, and she's my late sister-in-law, my brother's wife. She came into our life early in 1972, somewhere about the 14th of April. If my, if my memory is serving me right, and uh, I tell you the truth, she was a very generous person. And I heard somebody speak about Shia, so she stayed. Mm -hmm. A person that really, no, no trouble in that family, but before you make any trouble, you know, see sister dress. <laughs> Would you realize Thursday when I was going up to my brother's house, a gentleman was by the gate and he was about to go up. He said, man, now that you come, me, I go with you. <laughs> and we went up together and I got the button and my shirt. And he said to me, let me take a look. He come by my shirt and he look at it. He said he want to know if he had married his sister Joyce. And it's not very far. I won't tell you who. I won't tell you where. That is unknown. Jesus said a certain man. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? So that man look at the picture and he said, are you know me no more? Oh. You know the reason why? Oh, sister Joyce go to school. She came home, she took care of her family. She goes to the market, and she come back home. And if she come to church, then after church, Monday morning, she come back. It's not a person that you meet on the road at any time unless she's going to school or coming from school. Or maybe sometimes she go that way. And I'm not positive of her, what that lives in Brumel, she know them either. <laughs> because I tell she keep herself to herself. But guess what? She pleases my brother well. Amen. And in spite of who helps, did not get a piece of her the way you would want her as a community member. But my brother, down to her, he will have her in her heart because of the wife that she plays. So 
you might not hear me say a whole lot, but I tell you, the moderator, after he was his wisdom, but if I allow this program to come to a end, and I don't say something, it would look as if I only want to do the program. She no visit, visit people here. And she no fast, fast, not even business. She no perfect. Me no perfect. You might perfect. Keep it that way. But one thing I know, she's gone. And we will never meet this side again. So family, I encourage you to be strong. As Joshua was commanded. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Only be strong and have a good courage. And I know God will carry us through. We're gonna we're gonna have to keep my brother in prayer. He looks well now. But when they sing sleep on beloved. Hallelujah. And when all of the children are back to their normal and their brother-in-law and everybody else, it's going to be a difference. And let me say this to you, as the moderator, if you want ball, I feel high, I feel cry. I pause to say this as a reality. I went to a funeral and the speaker before he started to preach, he instructed the family. If you didn't cry, you want to cry. I will wait for the sermon till you cry. Yes. Because a man got a son and he was a school teacher. The man passed away and the son done everything as a son until the day to rest, but he never cries. Six months later, he was crazy and he couldn't go back to his job in the school. Otherwise, the man mad. You know what they have to do? When they investigated, he took it all inside. And they are supposed to reform a funeral settings and bring him back into it. And as soon as that session was over, that man was back in his right mind and he could have stayed back his job into the schoolroom. So I want to say, now make nobody hush your heart. If you want to pray, let it out. And you will be able to even eat better and drink better and sleep better because if it bubbled up inside and it'll come out, something else will go wrong. God bless you. As a second of good listeners, thumbs up to you all. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, at this time, let me just get out of the way now and get Mrs. Brown and Pastor Oni back. As soon as they are finished, We'll be having Pastor Michael Thompson Fulton Grassler, Ashe Ratri, granddaughter, past student, Victoria Church of God, in the Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that means you know how to Okay, all right, all right. So bypass that. Yeah. Councillor Colin Henry is here around? Yes. And Foral Trigget. You are going to come in that order. And let me take time out to say to you, today, I did not mention it, but you see it on your program. We have our minister that used to pastor us not very long ago. But he's not on this circuit anymore, but he's still a minister. And he's the one that is going to bring the word. And his name is Reverend Anthony Kirk Prinock. But on your program, you just see Reverend Kirk Prinock with Lady Far no problem with that. So he's going to be the speaker of the day. And I'm going to ask you, as you have been cooperating so well from the start of this program, please listen carefully when he comes because there is a word that's going to dear for you and if you leave that word you are going to be waiting the balance and you're going to come wanting so if i were like you 
I would not go away without hearing the word for yourself. God bless you. Come in that order as I call.
of the new Jerusalem. Yes, and we prayed together, and that was the last time. When Opie called me in the night and told me my sister passed, I could not see. But I know her soul is resting in peace Amen. because she died sober. Yes. May God bless her yes. and keep her. To be absent from this life is to be present with the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. My Auntie Joyce, from when I was a little boy, my mom, she over there. She's the one that used to do the cooking when Nida Rachi of the man working. That's how my mother met my father, is by coming up by room well. <laughs> and she find this man to come to her to go back home. And that's how I came in the picture with all the bad Yeah, that's how it comes. <laughs> yes. And Uncle Calvin used to be the one to carry the food to the field and to carry up on his shoulders the little boy to come back. Until the real time for me to go base his school. And my auntie Jai used to come and he said, O'Neill and me hold on and I run. And then Shelly here, I heard the same way, hold on and my hand and another child. One long line. Yes, and sometimes we say, Mommy, because now we are calling them and she jumped and said, Come on, we are going to school. <laughs> no time to greet nobody. <laughs> and when we go to school and Bulga time, I never love Bulga. And she not kill me be if he is Bulga. <laughs> and my mother again will be going to be if he is Bulga and never like Bulga. <laughs> it is good for you, it is. <laughs> and she would kill me with me. And I told she come and rub me little jar. And give you jumps. And a good sweet potato pudding. And no one could make a better pudding one man. And when she bake her pudding and she had come down. And her back full up and it cut you up. And she, what? I don't know you wanted that back on her shoulder. She was a strong one. She had potato. She had pumpkin. She had cucumber. Everything. 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 This is not what we're making up. Anybody know my auntie? Yes. That's how she'll do. And he'll say, this a bit that, this money, this a bit that. Yes. And when it come about porridge and she boil porridge. Yes. And you know what's boiling like a creeping. Yes. Me and Shelly used to fight porridge and Shelly cry porridge. <laughs> so, <laughs> and she has said, I feel you time now. Keep on going. Give her a great man. Yes, but she was a very loving lady and don't close up. I never go and visit her and she said, no man, you can't come out. If I want soap and you need to know, I mean, I said, yeah, right. No man, if I want soap, she always will find something. Always finding something. God bless you here, Archie. Hallelujah. You could have not done better. And I watch when you and your daughter, your seven daughter, one is not here, your two sons, Oral and Pete. Jet to have seven daughter, Moses, hallelujah, mother and father in law. And the seven of you stood up with your father and the two sons. God bless you. Yes. God keep you. But mother's name, the last time I see my auntie Jais, my mother come, I was sleeping and she called me and said, We could go and look for auntie Jais. And I said, I'm coming and I get ready. And me and her and her two grandsons, my two little, we go up there and she was happy. Yes. And I called to her and then me and the other, she sit down in the hall. And I've been a talk and let her and my mother. Talk. And she was just calling me, come right down here, come and come pray. Probably come here and say, come and nine people and pray. <laughs> and then we said, we soon come and me and my mother talk and me and the leader having a reason. And then we go in here and we see people and we say, my auntie, if they have to cut the wood, they don't even want to cut us. So I go. Make up your mind. He said, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and we reason and then bring you a and I nine people and I, before I pray, I sing number nine permission. I must have the Savior with me. For I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me. And his arms are only told. Then my soul shall fear no evil. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a murmur. I must have the Savior with me. For my faith and best is me. He can whisper words of comfort. Hallelujah. That no other voice can speak. Hallelujah. I must have the Savior with me. In the hunger, march of life. To the tempest, the sunshine. To the battle and the strife. Hallelujah. Amen. I must have the Savior with me. And his eyes, the way must die. Yuku shot. Echo shot. Yuku shot. Yuku shot. 
she picked them up at their parents home and she carried them to school and back and as pastor peg right he said i don't know how sister joyce always managed that bar god bless you leader rachi irish potato every time you meet auntie joyce there's always something in her bag to give away she was a kind woman and Every morning she always busy. You never see Auntie Joyce walking as if she always on the go. And what I admire about Auntie Joyce, she worked as a teacher from Monday to Friday. And on Saturday she's in the market to make sure that her husband goods will take care of. Auntie Joyce always tried for excellence. She wants the best for her husband and her family. She said, I want to live in a good house. I want to see my children pass the worst. And praise God, she lived to see all of those accomplished. Auntie Joyce, I admire her all the way. I and Auntie Joyce, we are brother and sister kids. And she, is a, she was a role model to all of us when it comes to discipline. May her soul rest in peace. And the last part, I must say this, I did not plan it, but it rests on my heart. As I look at you, Leader Ratchi, and I look at all your kids, all of them grow up. And most of them, if not all, is only Pete live with you right now. After the funeral, all will be leave. I, I have been there. My first wife, she sick for 12 years. And then she died. Yes. And when she died, it seems as if life over. Right. But Brother Leader Rachi, God has blessed me. Yes, and God provide another God wife for me. And, and trust me, what Sister Ivan, where Sister Ivan left off, she Take it up. Sister Primrose, Take it up. pick it up. Yes, yes. And right now, I am enjoying life to the fullness. <laughs> All is not lost. <laughs> Plenty more in you. You will sit down and send me down. Look at me. Life goes on and the dead cannot come back again. And your kids live all over the place. And let me tell you something and I close. It's hard for a man to work in the field and go home and cook. And you reach big size no for man to cook for And you have to send a shop go buy you dinner. If life if you please, yes, just as you are, live on. You will, I will live on. Live on. Yes. God bless you.
try this one. <laughs> it died. It died. It died. Yeah. Good afternoon. It is mind boggling to attempt to posit and situate a profusion of memories of a vibrant and charismatic individual who kept our minds active with every interaction and conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, Today we gather here to celebrate the remarkable life of my beloved grandmother, Mrs. Joyce Ratchery. As I stand before you, a flood of memories and emotions overwhelm me. Though my heart wrestles with grief, my spirit is comforted by an immense sense of gratitude for the extraordinary woman that I got the privilege to call grandma. She was more than just my grandma. She was an excellent teacher, a mother wife, a great mother, she was my mentor, my friend, my guiding light. She was literally there for me from the day I was born, and she was the one who caught me when I was born. <laughs> no wonder then that we had such an enduring bond, or as many would say, she had a soft spot for me. In fact, she was the one who taught me how to read, and not just read, but read with understanding. She taught me how to use context clues to figure out words that I didn't know. As she would say, she taught me how to pick sense out the nonsense. <laughs> and who better to teach me than her? That woman's mind was as sharp as a razor. I tell you, talking to her was like exploring a treasure trove of knowledge and wisdom. She inspired me to look deep into things, and of course, Grandma never forgot anything. <laughs> Grandma had a way with words. She loved to write. I will miss being able to call her to vet my work. Mama had a saying for pretty much anything you could think of. One of her favorite was, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Reminding me that leadership comes with much responsibility. A serious life lesson I cherish to this day. Just as she was able to dig deep, grandma knew how to have fun. She was a rock star, the life of her own party, I mean, the party that she kept every time her favorite songs would play on the radio. Mm -hmm. And if you knew her well, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know she played three radios at once. <laughs> <laughs> her laugh was infectious. It permeated anywhere she was, and her smile could light up a room. But most of all, it would be followed by, what a way I can give joke. <laughs> there was never a dull moment when I was around her. She was so caring and compassionate on top of it. So, whenever you got sick around grandma, you better get ready to drink some beef soup and a numerous number of herbal concoctions, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yes, grandma had a big heart. I call her my grand grand, and she very much is mine. But in truth, she was a mother and teacher to many others. Grandma had a deep passion for children. She believed that education was the key to transforming their lives for the better. And because of her dedication and enthusiasm for this personal mission of hers, she left an indelible mark on every child she taught and mothered. Grandma could have taught even a donkey to read, and I'm pretty sure she tried. <laughs> I'm sure the saying, labor for learning, before you grow old, for learning is better than silver and gold, is stuck in many people's minds because of her. Suffice it to say, Grandma lived a fulfilled life, one that exemplifies the power of kindness and having a good heart. I will miss all of this, but most of all, I will miss my cheerleader. Grandma never ceased to tell me how proud she was of me, even when I did the simplest things, like turning up her phone or fixing her radio. I will miss the constant reassurance that I am doing well and that I am capable of doing great things. I can definitely remember the days when I'd call her after work and I'd complain about how tired I was. And of course, Grandma always said, you shall pass through this day, but only once. Or, it will be long, but it will never be forever. Grandma always ended the conversation by saying, I am praying for you, and my love is always with you. As I stand here today, bidding her farewell, I am filled with gratitude for the times we shared, the memories we created, and the lessons she imparted. I cherish every moment that we had spent together. I will carry your wisdom, your love, and your laughter in my heart, always and forever. 
Rest in peace, Grandma. You'll always be my guiding light. For student, you are called to, to come to the, the podium of this time. For student, <laughs> you are here and you are a past student. Thank you. Even, even, even if you didn't do the rehearsal with us, the song that we chose is well known. It's until my heart will keep singing. We met and we, we did this song. So all past students. Even if you are to come up to stop here and uh, just stand up up here, we can't. She touches, she touches our lives. So pass students, pass students. The title of the song is Until Then, Until Then. Even our own children, <laughs> your past student, come and stand up with us. Okay. Okay. Just a minute, just a minute, musician. In the year 1968, Miss Joyce Rochi was appointed to be the head teacher at the Victoria Basic School. Almost everyone who was born and grown in Victoria and surrounding communities during that time passes through her hands. That's why you see the, the volume of us up here this evening. You could see her coming down with a group of children around her, some holding on to her dress. She hold on to one or two hands with her bag in the other hand. With teary eyes and running nose, we try to hold on to our mother when, when they took us to school because we did not use to the new environment. Mm -hmm. But within a few days, we were settled down. She held our hands and taught us how to make A and O's. Wherever we reach in life, and I know you can attest to this, wherever we reach in life, Sister Joyce is the one that taught us. She gave us the early start. Amen. If I am correct, say amen. amen. Another amen. amen. Reverend Mackenzie. She taught me at once in school. She taught you at once in school. Yes. And she taught yes. Sister Lynn at once in school. Yes. And, and one, all once in school people put up your hand. She taught these people at once in school. Reverend Mackenzie, I will pray with you. Okay, so we are going to do that song. She worked at Victoria for over 40 years. Over 40 years. I, I traveled one time. Sister Joyce didn't talk to you. I'm sure that she didn't talk to you. I know that you're older. <laughs> than the time she talked down there. I know one still but a big man. <laughs> okay. He was a late starter. Oh, you was a late starter. Alright, no problem, you know I dispute that. We are gonna sing now. But because of Auntie Joyce influence, I traveled one time. Musician, you are charged. I traveled one time, 2008, and I went to St. Martin. That's the only time I ever traveled. I got a lot of, of opportunity, yeah. but I turned them down. I could live in America now. I know People want, want to file for me, and I said, oh, I am going to stay here until your people come back. <laughs> I am going to keep the community till you come back. <laughs> well, what I see is, 
Now, when I went to St. Martin, Elder Archie, your daughters yes. took care of me. I love that. They took me to restaurants and they fed me. That's good, man. I went to a house party <laughs> and I enjoyed myself. That's right. They gave me money. That's right. I spent two weeks and I, at that time, I was a part of the, the St. Martin Rachi family. That's right. Put your hands together for them.
The Lord give it, and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me pass to greet all the officiating minister here. Um, first, I want to greet the moderator, of course. Reverend Pinnock. Pastor Thompson, Reverend Garfield Brown, Pastor McLean, and all the members that sit in the clergy. Choir members, family members, well-wishers, good afternoon. I stand here this afternoon, want to lend my support to the family members. I've heard so much about Sister Giles, even before I got the chance to meet her. Guys, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you the story that my mom used to attend the Maypen Market. And that's where my mom met Sister Joyce in the market. And my mom was young in the business. But Sister Joyce was always there to hold her hand. And one would have wondered, how can someone be selling the same produce, but still holding someone hand? Sell a pound of yam, and he would say to my mom, it's your turn, sell your yam as well. That's the lady, sister. That's Sister Joyce we're talking about. And so, my mom would grow till Sister Joyce would have you know, left her produce with my mama, go to the supermarket to do the little shopping, and then they will do the same. My mom would go to the supermarket and Sister Giles, you know, just watch over, oh Lord, our Lord. And so I want to say this afternoon that five years later, and I'm just saying this for us to understand that it pays to live good. And it pays to do good in whichever way that you can. Because five years later, my uncle would pick one of the brightest angel out of the family, which is Sister Helene. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it was so easy to drill in because Sister Joyce would have paved the way from in the market, not knowing that my family would intertwine with their family. So I stand there this afternoon. Just want to give tribute and I want to say to the family member that she has left a legacy. One for you to build up. She has impacted so many lives across the length and breadth of this community. And so, I'm asking you to continue to build on it because she has left a mark. One that cannot replace. The most we can do is just continue to build on it. And Sister Elaine and family, I just want to tell you that we are here to support you. Because you would have paved the way for the children and a whole lot. When I would stand outside and I look at the amount of our students, I would say to myself that this lady was here for a purpose. And I believe she had fulfilled her purpose. So don't mourn for her too much. She had played her part. And before I take my seat. It is a clock that's spinning. Yes. Are you prepared? I'm asking myself, are we prepared? Yes. Because the truth is, we are writing our, our tribute while we are here and hurt. What will be the headline? Would it be good? Would it be bad? Our 12 o'clock is coming. Yes. But I am saying, let us do the writing and be prepared to meet thy God. God bless you. Thank you.
will take on but only to sleep in the hand of my Savior, so sweet.
Hi Kalisha. Hi Libby. Hi Sonia. Hi Ruti. Hi Sheldon. Do I say goodbye to what we had? The good times outweigh the bad.
person of Reverend Anthony Kerr Pinnock. He will be your radio speaker. I hope that you will work with him as I said. Remember, there's a word for somebody. If you leave without getting your word, you will be sorry. So I want to thank you, audience. Yes, sir, you can see. I want to thank you for working with me. You are the nicest set of people you could have been today. May the Lord continue to bless you and continue to keep me in your prayers. Love you all. And it was good working with you. You might have to come up later on. I hope you are still here. God bless you. Bishop Harris. And the reading follows. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Amen. Come on, let us continue to worship the Lord. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the presence of an awesome God. Because of time, I want to, on the platform, establish, observe all protocols. And I'm happy to be here this afternoon in this Thanksgiving service. I have checked that Sister Joyce, Mother Joyce, Mommy Joyce, Minister Joyce, Amen, and all the names we may have called her, have spent 83 years with us as the Lord has lent her to us. As a part of the Harris family, I grow believing that we and the Rachi family are very close family because of the way that Bishop Ratchi and his brother would treat Mother Ratchi, my aunt. So when I used to come for the coffee at Mother Ratchi, I would cross over. Amen, so I'm no stranger to the family. And it's a family that I'm happy to be associated with. There are some family you don't want to be associated with. But I'm happy to be associated with this I want to read a passage, one verse of a scripture and take my seat. St. John chapter 11, verse 11, the Amplifier said, He said these things, and they have, Our oh, friend Lazarus is at rest and sleeping, but I am going there that I may awoke him out of his sleep. I want to say our mother, sister, Joyce is sleeping, and when Jesus when he's going to wake her, God bless you. Shall I praise the Lord? Praise Shall I praise the Lord? Let me greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a tribute from a past student, but she is in England. Sister Sonia, it is Sister Mary's sister. A tribute to God's servant. God has created man in his own image, and to do his will on earth, one of his daughters, teacher Joyce Rachi, has done well of God. She has shaped the lives of so many men and women of today, of which I, Sonia Daly Archer, will remain externally grateful to her. Because of Sister Joyce, I can read and write today. Because of good foundation, I was given in primary school. I am who I am today not just impacting life in many communities, but in my church and in the foreign land. So I want to thank God for Sister Joyce, a heroine in God's kingdom. Sister Ratri, I thank you very, very, very much. God, I thank you very much. Thank God for your life and may your soul rest in peace. And I will always, always have you in my heart. God bless you. From Sister Sonia Daly. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask the hushers to get ready. And I'm going to ask you to this over here. God bless you. God bless you. Number three. Hushers, get yourself together. Family member, so far. Always good in this area. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we come in your name today. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy towards us. Thank you, God, to gather us in this fashion. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for this offering that will be collecting, O oh God, for your work on earth. We pray that bless it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Will your hanker hold? It's our free time, so we're on the outside. Hello. Hello, man. Hello, sir. So we're on the outside. So we're going under the tent and give you an outside view.
Look around now, this thing's around the old side, all right? Come on, 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 So people, this is under the tent on the other side, all right? Sorry. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You know you don't remember the man. I know, this is what you Hey, your husband? Yeah. It's me. So people we are on the outside people, this is the next side of the church. Uh, as, you, as you know, it's a mother funeral and the world turned out. And we thank you for what you'll be doing according to your will in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Assessing, assessing. I'm sure. Yes. He will do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some people are going back inside. All right. So just give you a preview on the outside. Thank you very much.
that city. And nothing with fire in our need. No pain and no sickness can enter. No. Hallelujah. You have to understand that it's a holy place. Her sorrows and tears are forgotten. No tempter is there to annoy. No parts ever spoken. There is nothing to hurt. What a sweet, bright city. And some writer said that city is soon. Coming down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of our lives. And with the security that we have in you, Lord, we can shout a hallelujah. We can be confident of the unknown. We can look in the face of death and say we are ready. For Jesus has already paid our price. God, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house again. And even though this situation is not the one we would prefer, but Lord, we still shout praises to your name for you are a faithful God. Lord, we honor you for you have done good to us while we remain in the land of the living. And even though we meet at this time of parting, we ask, Lord, that you strengthen those who mourn Encourage the weak-hearted, strengthen the feeble knees, and help us, Lord, as we journey and tabernacle together with you to remind ourselves and each other, Lord, that you are faithful, God, that life and death is in your hands, and you, Lord, remain sovereign over all the created order. And everything that you do, Lord, is well done. So, Lord, we honor you now. Even now as we prepare to hear from you, speak now to us, Lord, in accents clear and still. And may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts connected, our minds concentrated, and our spirits connected, to be pleasing in your sight, Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. And the church say, Amen. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, Leader, you are the deacon Uriah Ratchet, the moderator of today's proceedings. My close colleague and friends in the full time pastoral ministry from different denominations in these spots, those who sit on the platform and those who occupy the congregation seats, members of the choir, the musicians, the officers, leader G. Ratri, members of the Rubin family, members of the Bloomberg Baptist Church, and the Christian community in these parts. I greet you well, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is a sad occasion which we are gathered here to meet. But I was saying to my friend Reverend Thomas that <laughs> Thompson that we can not find a more sad space to be in than a funeral. The the, the pain and the grief of a child losing their mother, burying their mother, no matter how old you are, even if you're a granny, yes. to bury your mother, is your mother. Yes. What can anybody say to you to comfort you? Is your mother. Yes. That sadness, that hurt, that pain, yes. to bury your grandmother, to bury a wife, a sister. Oh, and look at the Paul bearers and I see all our brothers there. I said, man, they have to carry their sister. What can you say to satiate the grief and the pain? There, there are no words to be said. There's no sadder place than a funeral. 
But in another sense, there is no happier place to be yeah. than to hear the tributes and the testimonies of a saint. One who has lived a faithful life for God. And even though we decide to gather to, to, to mourn her past and to give her her final Christian rights, today we are also celebrating the goodness of her life. And so it's fitting that we should raise tributes to her life, remember her fondly, and do our best to honor all her legacy, even after her parting. And so, in the midst of the duality of pain and praise, I greet you well. I bring these greetings from the Mandeville Circuit of Baptist Churches. And of course, on behalf of the St. Elizabeth Manchester Baptist Association, and by extension, the entire Jamaica Baptist Union. And I know I can speak for my colleague ministers in this parish that the Clarendon Baptist Association also sends their greeting. I give it an esteemed privilege to be asked to share at such an auspicious occasion. I do consider myself the least, the littlest among us, the very least of all the apostles and the saints who could have gone on, who would have gone on before. But I'm standing here in the capacity of the last minister of this circuit and of this church. And I'm standing here as representatives of all the ministers who have gone on before me and those who have gone on from this life as well. I believe in the lifetime of Sister Ratri, maybe only two of us have remained alive, Reverend Morgan, Othman Morgan, and myself. And so on his behalf also, I extend these greetings, Leader Ratri, to you and the family. But make no mistakes, as I stand here, as representative of the Jamaica Baptist Union, and all the ministers that would have occupied that man's at town to town, I speak of reverence before Roy Henry. After, sorry, Roy Henry. Let me go from the beginning and then I'll come down. Reverend Leo Riney himself. Reverend Dr. Roy Henry. And the Reverend Dr. Gillett Chambers. And I can say without any doubt that would have been extremely happy and privileged were they alive today to be standing where I am standing to lift up a tribute to this faithful woman of God and mother of And so today, the invitation to stand in this capacity when leader called. I said, Leader, I don't know what's on my schedule, but I am almost sure I can tell you that it is clear without consulting my diary, for I would have to be here. But I, I speak on their behalf that Sister Joyce Rattry would have been that sister who whenever the minister would journey to the Bloomberg Baptist Church, she was the one who would ensure that they were well fed and well watered. She would open up her home to receive them for Sunday dinner and any other dinner in the week that was necessary. And they could eat their fill and then take another package home. And it's not just the cooked food alone that those ministers would leave with. But that yard always have food in it. And so a crocus bag will be filled with yams, sweet potatoes, ripe and green bananas, plantains, and the works. How do I know these things? 
I said I am the least of the apostles and came in an untimely time when she was not on her feet. That leg was giving her real problems. She was unable to come out to church. She was really not the woman she used to be. But she never made that stop her. I too received my invitation to come home. And those who had the privilege like us to come home and eat know that it is fish that is on the menu. Leader Ratchet. Is that everybody know that in a leader Ratchet? But those of us who have the privilege to sit at that table know that it is fish on the menu. And so, I really am taking this as an awesome privilege for this woman took care of the men of God, took care of the servants of God. And when I tell you that her reward is secure, I am not holding down my mouth and tongue. We can't put nobody into heaven, but this woman's reward is secure. So I wonder if I hear the man of God prophesying the sermon already before I preach it. I wonder if you would just give me a few moments of your time because, you see, we live in a world that if we don't teach the next generation certain principles they will not learn. And sometimes we don't spend enough time with old people so that we can learn from them that when they have gone on before us, the things that have kept them will keep us. I tell you, some of you will not live to see 83 years. If you don't learn so many things that Sister Rattray did, that Sister Joyce lived by. And so in her passing, what better time for a message like this to be preached? Grounded in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. A word of God that read like this. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he or she that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give a drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily I say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward the word of the Lord we honor it by saying thanks be to God and if I should give a title or a topic or a theme to this brief word, it would be a secured reward. A secured reward. Saints of God, I want to take the next few minutes and somebody time me. Somebody time me. It's a too late time. When 15 minutes don't say amen. And I'm going to stop. Because it's a long day. Let me say this clearly. I want to show you out of the text that we can secure our eternal reward by receiving a prophet, by receiving a righteous man, and by receiving a disciple of Jesus Christ. The text says in Matthew chapter 10, that Jesus was sending his disciples out. This was halfway through his mission here on earth. He felt he had sufficiently prepared them to go out to test now how ready they were for the world before them. And so Jesus gave them instruction about what they must do when they come into a town or a city or a house. If they welcome you, bless them. 
If they reject you, shake off the dust off your feet and leave them. I will deal with it in the right time. Yeah. And he warned them that as you go, do not pack anything to carry. Don't carry no clothes. Don't even carry your staff. Don't carry no money, no food. For I have prepared people ahead of you who will provide all your needs. They are my people. So go by faith and I will care for you on the journey. Jesus was sending his servants out into the world. And so in the end of the text, we have these two verses. And if you pick it up at verse 40, he says to them, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one that sent me. And so it is a word to the church that, that, that God himself is intending to, to test our readiness for heaven right here on earth. I wonder if you understand what I am. You soon get it. What I know. I said, God, through Jesus, was testing his disciples' readiness for ministry after he is gone. But when we read the text, the text, it is said to us, God is testing our readiness for heaven while still here on the earth. Understand, we can secure our eternal reward, reward if we receive a prophet. You see, receiving a prophet, the text says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, will qualify you to receive what the, what the text describes as a prophet's reward. The prophet's reward consists of all of those blessings and graces that God provides for those who God himself have called to the prophetic ministry. And Jesus then was saying to his disciples, you who are now going to proclaim my word, I've given you the same title that I gave the Old Testament men who declared, thus said the Lord. So whether you are foretelling or you are foretelling, you in Jesus' eye are a prophet called to the prophetic ministry. And so the prophetic ministry has a particular reward that comes with it. And if you are able and open and willing to receive the prophet, then you will share in the prophet's reward. It involves then the ability to advance further in the spiritual disciplines. And it, and it benefits, and the benefits as well as the consequences that comes when one grows in favor with God and in his will. You know when God bless you, your enemies are going to increase. Yes, yes, yes. You know when God has pour out in pleasures upon your life and family, yes, yes. people are going to like you. Yes. I said the prophet you want and the blessings and the consequences when you are advancing in your spiritual walk with God. Yes. Remember the man over there? An ordinary man, but he welcomed the prophets of God. He fed them, yes. and he too inherited the gift yes. of prophecy. And all and every man who inherited the prophet's rewards, just because he welcomed and received yes. the prophets of God. You see, those who spend their time, their talents, and their treasures to benefit the servants of God, those who give up their substance to honor God's servants. The Lord himself will specially set them apart for divine honoring to what the Bible calls the prophet's reward. You see this prophet's reward, I must point out, is <laughs> that something you're going to get when you reach him. A right here upon earth, right here in the land of the living, you will receive it. Yes, man. I wonder if you understand. Yes, man. And it's not the prophet himself giving you the reward, it's God. 
is God. The same way God covered the prophet, God will cover you. Yes. The same way God take care of Daniel in the lion's day is the same coverage over your life. The same way God can raise up a little Jeremiah, even though he was a child, the same way God can raise you. I said, you receive the prophet's reward right here in the land of the living. Sister Joyce was a true church mother, a true community mother. And today we gather to celebrate her faithfulness. I hear Pastor Peck say she was one who washed the apostles' feet. She was one who washed the prophets' feet. She was one who took care of every man of God sent to the circuit by the Jamaica Baptist Union. And so I have no doubt, for I am one of those who stand here to testify of how she cared for me. Yeah. Oh, she wouldn't even make me lift a finger when I get there. Yeah. And I said, no, she's not moving so well, so let me help her. She said, no, Reverend, I'm a little quiet boy. I sit down right here. Yeah. You want any more? Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, I tell her she was a shame. Yeah. I never got the privilege to interact with her at church. Always at the home at that stage of her life. But she took the very best care. Yes. Always asking about my wife and the kids. Yes. And sending no, I can't tell you what it would have come home for them as well. A prophet's reward. You see, that woman's reward is secure. Not only that, the text goes on to say, not only he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet reward, but he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man receives a righteous man reward. If I had time to preach, I'd tell you what the text is saying. It doesn't matter who the righteous man is or who the prophet is, you respect the office. Yes. If I nearly go boy to you, you respect the office. He might have milk on him out, you respect the office. For a righteous man, or a, pr a prophet, is a man of God. He comes in the name of a righteous man, in the name of a prophet. So he comes in the authority of the office, which is established by God. So that's why Jesus prefaced all of it by saying, If they receive you, they receive me. And if they receive me, they receive the one who sent me. So if you reject the man of God, you're rejecting God. Oh, some people turn away the blessing from their house. Oh, they turn away the blessing from their family. Not Marawachi. This is a choice understood what the word of God said. So she welcomed the man of God. But I want to break this down a little further for you. It's one thing to receive the prophet's reward. To receive the prophet and qualify for the prophet's reward. But Jesus also talked about receiving a righteous man's reward. And thereby earning the right to qualify for a righteous man's reward. Why would he say that? Wouldn't we assume that a prophet is a righteous man? Yes. And a righteous man is also in the prophetic. Yes. So why was Jesus saying the same thing twice? Was he repeating for emphasis or is there a further thing for us to learn? Let, let me show you what the text says. Come on, sort out this man. Praise God. So when Jesus repeated, the phrase that receiving a righteous man qualifies you for a righteous man's reward. What he was saying to us was that the righteous man's reward is rooted then in a special gift. Now, I need to make this clear. That it is one thing to be nice to your boss, eh? <laughs> Because he's your pastor. But they're your church brother and sister, you don't regard them. And I believe Jesus said, Listen, I want to distinguish between the prophets and the righteous. 
because it's not your pastor alone going to heaven. No. To the whole church full of saints. And this is what we do as pastors. We are preaching and preparing our people to go to heaven. Yeah. And so we expect all believers to qualify as a righteous man, yeah. a righteous woman. If you receive them, you also receive me, Jesus said. Yeah. So what is a righteous man's reward? Let me break it down for you. A righteous man's reward is rooted in one of the most powerful spiritual gifts there is. That is the gift of faith. Faith, where is even if it is small as a mustard seed, it can move mountain. It can say to this mountain, get up and be cast into the sea. And we understand that by this faith, the righteous man can cover and things to move through prayer. So the text says that the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous will avail much. You understand then that the righteous man unlocks the ability, the righteous, receiving the righteous man unlocks the ability of the righteous reward. What this means is that the righteous reward is the ability to call upon the name of the Lord in times of trouble. To call upon the name of the Lord in unexpected circumstances. To call on the name of the Lord and speak to situations and have them reversed. Speak to situations and have them turn in your favor. The reward of the righteous. Only oh, wicked can't do that. They can't call on the name of the Lord when them won't get stolen. Our teeth come for them come. They can't call on the name of the Lord and expect with confidence when the gunman kick down your door and point that gun in the face. They don't practice to call on the blood of Jesus. But a righteous man don't work to say. A righteous man is used to doing it. And so the righteous has the authority by faith to call on these favors from God. You receive a righteous man. You receive the righteous man's Reward. I want the church to appreciate what I'm saying here. Yes. The righteousness is not something that is limited to the rich, no. the educated, no. the popular, no. or the powerful in the church. The Lord said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Righteousness is the basic behavior of every believer. Yes. So be sorry for you. If you have come to church and you don't reach righteousness yet. I'm sorry for you if you're walking in the spirit and you don't know what righteousness is. It is right being, right behaving, right believing, and right living. The righteous no slander the brother and sister. They will gossip. The only thing that gossip is the gospel. They want to tell somebody else about the goodness of God. Righteousness. every people here Jesus was expanding the opportunity for the believer to gain and to secure the reward from the Lord you can't just receive your pastor alone you have to receive your brother yes. and your sister you can't just pack up the pastor with the whole of the food yes. and go say somebody has done the road that have done feed everybody has carry everything to your pastor So he speaks in these two verses of the prophet's reward. 
the righteous man's reward. And these are very good rewards to receive. Yeah. For the, the prophet's reward you receive it here in the land of the living. Yes. yes. The righteous man's reward you receive it right here so upon planet Earth. Yes. But there's a third reward. Yes. Which, 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 which if you follow Jesus, it looks like he's coming down. Yes. The prophet's reward looks like the big one. Yes. And you step down a little bit to get the righteous man's reward. But here Jesus said, this last reward is for all you have to do is just don't even receive the prophet. Don't even receive the righteous man. Just give a little cup of cold water. To any one of my disciples, if you do the least of these for the least of mine, you are mine. Yes. That's what he says. So when we look in verse 42, he said, Whosoever shall give a drink of to one of these little ones, my pioneers, the Greek word said, my little children, yes. my disciples, is the intention and the interpretation. Give them a cup of cold water. Remember, they never have fridge. That yeah. time. Yeah. So they're talking about room temperature water. Yeah. They're not talking about draw something yeah. from yeah. the well. Yeah. Dig yeah. down in the ground. Yeah. Refresh yeah. somebody. Yeah. Meet yeah. their needs yeah. before your needs. Look out for what they are in need of and providing. Yes. It yes. speaks to someone who's at the well yeah. trying to get something to drink. But because you've been there before them waiting to draw your water, you want to put them behind. You say, no. Give them something to drink Dream. before you serve yourself. Look out for their needs. Remember that Syrophoenician woman who said that she's going to put on the prophet yes. while he fled from Jezebel. Yes. And the man of God said, Need what you want. Anything you need, I will provide it yes. to you. Yes. They want an audience to the king. They want something from God. The woman said, I need nothing. But you realize she never had any children. Yes. After my sister. So right there, he said, Next year this time, you
Reverend Kirk done it. I told you, I would not want to be selfish like a woman and the pastor. When she was in church and the pastor gave them the sermon and he had us to drove her home. In our words to the pastor, Rev, you're certainly giving to them today. <laughs> but she didn't put herself into it. But time and time rolled on that one Sunday, it was only she and the pastor went to church. And the pastor blown on a sermon. And I learned this time when she was going on to say, Pastor, I wish they were here today. <laughs> so in our open appeal, she not included. I said that, I said this to say that. I told the occupation and who on the outside. If you go away, there's a word that was here for you, and if you go away, you're gonna wait the balance and come one day. I wasn't planning to leave. So because of that, I didn't exclude myself. I improved myself. Thank God for the man of God. We can achieve it again. So that's the story. Yes, sir. And I hope that we receive. We can open and let us know what you need, but Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It couldn't come at a better time and a better form. At this time, we will be favored as we listen to the union. It is Miss Lisa Ratchery Party and Mistress Nicole Ratchery. Connor.
By then, she mothered her first child, named Sharon, who predeceased her. Joyce's strong will and determination forced her to enter the world of work. She started working at Wanstead Infant School. She traveled the rocky, hilly, far terrain for 12 long years. She grew tired of traveling, and by this time, an opportunity for her to teach at the Victoria Basic School in 1968 presented itself. She was an excellent teacher. She was committed to her profession and cared deeply about her students' success. Mama was always coming up with new and innovative ways to teach and engage students. She catered for the total man, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. In the year 1968, Joyce realized that with all her achievements, there, were, there was the need for the ultimate achievement. Therefore, she accepted the Lord as her personal savior and was an ancient member at Victoria Full Truth, where she was a Sunday school teacher. It was during that time she caught the honey brown eyes of handsome stranger, Mr. Gladstone Rattray, who can, ima can you imagine the first day Mr. Rattray encountered, <laughs> entered his eyes on that beautiful lady? It was so, it was love at first sight. Their love blossomed into marriage on April 30th of 1972. The union produced six lovely children, four girls and two boys, who was now, she was now living at the Broomwell, which, I'm sorry, she was now living in Broomwell, but still traveled to the Victoria Basic School to teach taking the children with her. Due to her caring attitude and her passion for teaching, many parents entrusted her with their children. So for 40 years, she walked to, the, to and from Victoria Basic School, taking many children with her. During some of those days, she served as principal of said school. Her husband was a very outstanding farmer in the community on which Saturdays, she would go to the market to sell its produce. So it was teaching Monday to Friday and selling on Saturdays. She was a caring wife who believed that her husband should get the best food to eat, not to mention his porridge. <laughs> Mama was very kind. She would not allow any child that came to visit to go home empty-handed, whether you were related to her or not. However, she was a strict disciplinarian who wholeheartedly believed in, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. Because of this, if you didn't know her well, you would have thought that she was unloving. Simon Brown was no match for Mama. She was a great boxer. <laughs> you had to make sure you chose your words correctly, or your air would sing like an African drum. <laughs> if you think a mother then is overprotective of her chicks, then you've never sure. met Joyce Rattray. When we came to visit, we would be reminded of the motto, nobody not leaving the yard today, or turn off the TV and go to your bed. Can you imagine at 8 p.m.? <laughs> Mama became ill and her health failed, but her memory was still intact. We didn't expect her to go so soon. On June 4th, 2023, her condition worsened, so she was taken to the Spalding Hospital, where she passed away peacefully. Mama died, leaving her husband, leader Gladstone Ratchery. Her caretakers may have the conversation here. And Miss Mildred, four daughters, Opie, Hadereen, Shelly, and Terika. Mom shouted our names by Hal, Shell, Ter, and Hope. Four stepdaughters, Pauline, Faye, Elaine, and Claire. Two adopted daughters, Marcia and Tasha. Two sons, Coral and Pete seven sons-in-law, six brothers, three sisters, 
for the one great for the one grandchildren, 23 great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, many relatives and friends. Lord, I may not your purpose see, but all is well if done by thee. Sleep on, Mama. We love, love you, you well, well but, but Jesus, Jesus loves you best. best. Rounding up and it is summing up real nice. Don't you? Yeah. That's really the name of God. But every good thing.
My name is Lisa Ratri. Okay. And you're the last one. And my daughter. Okay. My nephew. Okay. Thank you all for watching. What are we a family? Alright. One family. Anything else you all are about? Yeah, one family. Yeah. So we're going out the graveside. Remember, join us at the graveside, all right? Coming over, coming over, coming over, coming over, coming over. Oh, you're here. No. Are you my interview? Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah, interview. So this is one of the family. Say your name. My name is Faye. Okay. This is Faye, people. We recognize Faye going to the comment section and bigger up, all right? And this is? <laughs> This is, Alia, the this is Alia people, one of the granddaughter. granddaughter. So recognize her big arm now, just now. <laughs> Say hi to somebody you know about it. Hi everybody. Hi Ruthlyn. Thanks for watching, honey. All right. What's that, Shelly? Who knows Shelly? Shelly's there. Oh. Okay. All right. Shelly. Somebody say big up. Big up, big up, big up. Thanks for streaming. Alia. Thanks for watching. Alia. Hello, Rosie. How are you doing? Hello in the UK, Michelle Tanisha. Hello, Miss Ruth Artie. Yeah, she's watching the So meet us, uh, join us back at the graveside, all right? Thank you very much. Lele 